Thank you both. Uh, Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia will refer right. to it as HIT from here on out. Yeah, thank um, you, Matthew. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Why don't you explain what that is? <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's been coming up in the news a little bit, as Cody mentioned, with the reactions to uh, the AstraZeneca and J&J vaccines. Um, you may have seen New England Journal of Medicine and, and further articles, but uh, I'll comment on that throughout the, the presentation here. But uh, my name is Matthew Burkhart, and uh, I'm heading the uh, company foundation and prog program execution efforts for Roar Medicines. And we are a, there we go, um, drug discovery company in discounted disease areas. And we're defining discounted diseases um, by those conditions where you have late stage validated and established science, but the, the patients afflicted are, are in smaller populations. So the market size is really below the level that pharma traditionally initiates internal discovery and development programs. Um, we simply put the emphasis on uh, the target in these diseases and really look for indications where you have established science validated usually through academic institutions um, so that you have high confidence in the target that you're modulating with uh, the drug discovery. Um, and we operate under a, a very lean virtual uh, discovery program, um, which is, is virtual. And we have a singular focus on essentially validating a singular asset in a single indication. And that we believe gives us the ability to prosecute these smaller uh, market disease areas with first in class in medicines um, that can deliver high clinical outcomes to patients. And so uh, with any asset centric company, you have to be very careful about program selection and program execution. And so we were introduced to uh, an antibody asset uh, through uh, the CAI group uh, and it has since become a, our lead program. Uh, and this is an antibody asset in heparin induced thrombocytopenia, HIT. Um, and uh, it, it's essentially a, an autoimmune type of reaction in small patient populations that are uh, given heparin in certain clinical settings. Um, and so the consequence of this is that 30% uh, of patients who develop HIT are at risk for thrombotic complications. There's a 10% mortality rate and a total increased cost of care uh, on the healthcare system of 1.2 billion per year in the US. Essentially that, that's uh, been a consequence of a, a year over year incidence rate of 20,000 patients uh, in the US per year. And so the current standard of care uh, in HIT patients is essentially managing the symptoms. So it's a reactive care to the thrombotic events uh, and the current um, on-market drugs uh, are usually non-heparin-based anticoagulants um, or uh, an emerging one that just filed for IND in January of this year uh, targets a platelet activation um, protein. Our target is different. We act essentially at the initiating pathology of HIT uh, and as a consequence, it allows us to develop a target product profile that differentiates us uh, from the current on-market drugs. That also grants us the ability to potentially eliminate uh, the condition from the clinic uh, in a prophylactic uh, administration setting. So administering the drug uh, prior to heparin so that you don't have to be reactive to the thrombotic events and you essentially eliminate uh, uh, HIT from the outset. Uh, so the two assets that we're looking at both uh, by the group at University of Pennsylvania um, one is an antibody asset, the second are a set of small molecules, both rationally designed. Um, and the existing work is great because it's essentially uh, proved out the proof of concept um, and shows that the drug is acting how it was designed to act, um, specifically pro prohibiting uh, HIT from manifesting in the clinic. Uh, so we don't have to worry about treating thrombotic complications. Uh, the market in the U.S. per year, uh, we, we estimate at 207 million, um, and we position these assets uh, for industry acquisition. Um, we're committed to taking them into the clinic through phase three ourselves, um, but certainly with highly experienced uh, clinical trial partners 
um, it makes sense to, to look for opportunistic or partner development. Um, we are an asset portfolio company. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are a number of these indications that we like uh, from a, a high confidence target scenario. Um, and essentially, we triage uh, program selection on a number of criteria listed on the left. Is this causal biology? Are they novel targets and novel mechanism uh, of actions that can really change the clinical algorithm? Um, is there an addressable population size that is enough to meet particular uh, financial criteria set up by industry? And then what is the path to execution? Uh, the follow-on programs to the HIT program, uh, two are in pediatric indications. One is a rare cancer indication informed by mutations that, that cause a, a specific uh, neurodevelopmental disorder. Um, so we like uh, uh, those three programs as follow-on indications. So the 24 month timeline is essentially moved uh, the HIT antibody into uh, IND filing uh, to enable clinical prosecution um, and then build on with the pipeline programs uh, and get those to an asset generation stage. Um, that money will also support uh, uh, bringing on a full-time CEO as well as a series A completion rates uh, that fills out the pipeline prosecution. Uh, the team behind this, uh, as I mentioned, is very lean, uh, operating virtually through some uh, partners that we have that do integrated uh, asset discovery and, and development. Um, and my background has been in uh, academia startup and, and pharma groups uh, for the past 15 years on the drug discovery side. Um, Diana has a, a, a number of years experience in company formation and NVC. Uh, and Anthony is really our industry expert for uh, CMC uh, and IND filing. Uh, so that's it. Um, I'm happy to take questions around the condition in the COVID scenario um, and appreciate the time. All right, does anyone have any questions for Matthew? Great presentation, Matthew, and really exciting data. You know, just a curious question. What does the name indicate? The role is for rare disease or for just, just you know, you pick the name as, as such? Yeah, I mean, I, I've operated in the rare disease space for a long time. I run this discovery and development efforts for a, a patient advocacy group in the UK. And you know, a lot of these uh, indications have to be kind of reactive. Um, and I, I think the, the roar, obviously the, there's a playoff of rare, uh, but it's also being a little bit more aggressive in the rare disease space. The traditional icon is, is a zebra, which comes from the old medical saying, when you hear hoofbeats, don't think zebra, think horse. Um, but I, I think a tiger, uh, it's a little bit more aggressive in the, the rare disease space and actively prosecuting these disease areas in patients that are often ignored. Interesting. So that tells me that your pipeline in future will, will have a more rare disease will be included, right? It is. I mean, officially, you know, depending on the country, uh, rare is, is defined by the number of patients in the U.S. It's 200K. Um, the incidence per year in the U.S. for HIT is 20,000. Um, but yes, yeah, so we do target patient populations. Um, one is as small as 500 globally. Um, it's just a function of the number of patients, the clinical impact that you think can have that determines essentially the financial viability. There are always going to be patient numbers and rare disease groups that are simply too small. You see this popping up with what are called N of one scenarios. Um, mm -hmm. Those are kind of better suited to investigator initiated trials um, and really committed academic groups that advance uh, ASOs, gene therapies, what have you. Yep, and we certainly need inventions like this. Awesome. So Matthew, we have a we will share the, your video with the all the investors that had signed up. Sure. Some of them um, took off for the rest of the day. So, but it was a fantastic presentation. Really fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.